We've been making hats with Beaver since 1989. All the tools that we have are vintage. They're from the 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, the materials we use are the same that your grandfather would be familiar with. They're the best that can be had. Our bodies come from Winchester, Tennessee. Our leather's coming out of Missouri. And all the work is done right here in our shop. Your grandfather, when he bought a hat, he'd wear it most of his life. It'd be cleaned, it'd be rebuilt several times. A quality hat will last you a long time because they're made to last. These are some of our restored hat making machines. We've got brim jiggers, crown pounds with crown irons, press, but the heart of the whole business that starts everything in the hat making is our blocking machine. This blocking machine was new, being used during the American Civil War. This is a hat body. It's not sized or anything yet, but this is how all hats start. The blocking machine starts the initial hat making process. This grabs the brim pulls out the extra slack, and the block sets the size and the height for the style of hat we're gonna make, and it shoves the block into the hat to start the initial hat making process. The next step in hat making after the blocking machine is on to the crown iron. At this point, the block that we put into the hat becomes an ironing board to smooth out the hat, shrink the fur down to it, make a higher quality hat which will continue the felting process. We shrink the fur, we iron out the lumps and bumps and make it nice and smooth so we can put a nice finish on the hat. When it crown irons, it's an automatic feel. This machine is made in the 1920s and it works as good today as it did in the 1920s. Here at the D Bar J Hat Company, we've built more than just a place to make hats. It's a nice place to spend our day making hats. Our friends come and hang out, visit, our customers come and have an enjoyable place to uh, see how their hats are made. We have parties, we have meetings. This is a nice place to be. Recently, we've uh, filmed a segment of Animal Planet's show Tank, which will be on shortly. Over the years, D Bar J Hat Company has made a number of hats for stage and TV stars and radio entertainers and rodeo riders. We've made hats for Joe Baumgartner, 17-time rodeo champion. We made hats for Tony Curtis. We made hats locally for Frank Marino of the Diva Show, 28 years running straight. Um, one of our most noted hats we've made is the Roy Rogers hat, approved by Roy Rogers for the Roy Rogers Museum. We make for uh, Dusty Rogers' the son in Branson. Um, the list of hats we've made for people depends on where you're from. We have made them for everyone is famous. This is the Federale hat. It's very popular today with the cowboy action shooters, the reenactors, the single action shooter society. Um, anybody who does the historical, you'll see this hat. Um, you'll see pictures of Judge Roy Bean holding court on the, the steps and Pecos on the saloon. And you see pictures of him wearing this. Curious George, the man in the yellow hat, the man in the yellow hat's wearing a Federale hat. Hat making in the United States dates back to the very beginning of the country. Uh, you've seen the movies where the trappers were trapping the furs. And what were they doing with them? They never told you. Therefore, they had an industry. They're sold to the Hudson Bay Company. They're sent to England. They're made into fur felt hats and sent back to the United States. So well, at one point, somebody got smart and uh, we started making the hats and sent them to Europe. So over 100 years, we were the uh, hat maker for the world. The very first gross national product in the United States was hats. The first union in the United States was the Hatter's Union. Um, without the hat industry, the United States would have never become industrialized um, and become what it is today. History has skipped that. It's all cars and Ford, but hats is the start of it all. All D Bar J hats are made in the United States in Las Vegas with pride.